good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Super Soul Sunday. I am Oprah, and I'm wow. joined today. This is amazing. I didn't know that I was sitting down with Oprah today. <sighs> oh, I, I wish I was Oprah. What, this is Dr. Jason Littleton. Welcome to California. Welcome to, to the here. show. Good to be here. Very nice to meet you. How's it going out there? You've got a good presence and following and book on energy and fatigue. And for anybody out there that's been tired, wanting more energy, what can they do? Let's just start out and hit them with that. Listen. There's a whole book devoted to this. There's a whole book. First thing you can do is go to my website, jasonmd.com. If you just want rapid information like that, but look, we're going to talk about some points today that are going to amaze you. You've seen people go from fatigued and tired to energized. What are the top four things you would tell people that help them get more energy? Simple. Let's just hit them with that. Yeah, simple. Movie, drink, sleep. You have to learn. Move, how. eat, there you go. drink, sleep. That Meds. Easy. That easy. Meds. Matt, see, if you do Great this, point. you maybe be able to stop taking your own meds. Move, eat, drink, sleep. You gotta move your body. You have to eat organic, healthy food, and you have to know when to eat it. You have to have hydration. You have to know how to drink water, when to drink water, and you have to also know other things that you need to drink to supplement that. Not just that, you gotta get good sleep. Because without good sleep, you're not gonna be able to have the full energy that you need. And that's intuitive, right? We all know that, but you gotta put it together. Move, eat, drink, sleep, meds. Gosh, I'm tired, I'm fatigued, what can I do? Well, you can take some meds. That's what you can do. But listen, not those type of meds. First of all, we gotta get you up and moving. M stands for moving. I tell people, three minutes, five times a week. Or actually, five minutes, excuse me, five minutes, three times a week. Here's the deal. Do something crazy. No way, five minutes, three times a week. That's only Five 15 minutes, minutes three times a week, that's yeah. nothing. Yeah, that's nothing. That's only 15 minutes in a week. Five minutes, three times a week. You can do that. But listen, if you're going to do it, you cannot just half do it. If you're going to jog for five minutes, you got to push it. If you got to Is break, five minutes really going to do anything? I'm skeptical. Do, no, it's going to do a lot. Here's the deal. If you go and tell someone, go to the gym for 30 minutes, three times a week, fine. They'll do it week one, week two maybe, but week three... It's going to be hard to keep that with your busy schedule. So you just want them to get started, do yeah. something anybody can do. Who In can a do, way. Who doesn't have five minutes? But I'll tell right. you something. I'm going to challenge you. If you do five minutes, if you got up right now, I put a jump rope in your hand, and for five minutes did that thing, and, I, and you didn't stop, and you pushed it, you might not be able to do the entire five minutes. We underestimate what five minutes can do. I ain't no rock off jump rope. No yeah, way. but if you think about it, if you just were doing as hard as you could for five minutes, Go. you'd be huffing and puffing. Yeah, you'd be out of gas. For you'd sure. be out of gas. I mean, this morning I did that. It's high stuff. intensity, but not interval. That's just exactly. high intensity. Exactly, it's high intensity. And okay, so let's dive more into that. Give me. So let's do. We got move, eat, drink, sleep. Give me a little eat, drink, sleep. So when we talk about eating, first of all, we talk about good organic foods, whole foods. So foods from the earth. Okay, when you talk about Vegetables, we talk about fruit, we talk about organic products. That's where more of the vitamins and nutrients come from. When you have things that have had pesticides or any type of fertilizer on it or anything like that, these fruits, these vegetables, don't have the best nutrients. Over time, in the good soils, through the organic soils, through local farming, what happens is that these nutrients that are in the ground, they get in our foods, and we eat what our foods eat. And so these things get in our body and it makes a difference. And what we want to do is we want to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then we want to have a snack in between, breakfast and lunch, lunch, dinner, and dinner in bedtime. And when I talk about snacks, I'm not you're talking going, about You're going so fast. You, you said, I'm so excited, you said, I can't you, help it. The, ener <laughs> the energy doctor's energy is up there. You said I'm breakfast there. and lunch and dinner and then what? You want to have snacks in between breakfast and lunch. You do want? Yes, Okay. You do. Lunch and dinner, and okay. dinner in bedtime. That's okay, so you meals. want, okay, so That's you're a fan meals. of a lot of meals like this. I am, and you want to make your meals in a way small but powerful. Okay. So the perfect snack. My, eating frequently but not overeating. Not overeating. I never overeat, and you don't want to overeat. So, for example, the perfect snack I, snack I recommend to my patients and clients and to everyone out there in TV land is almonds and blueberries. Organic almonds. Together? And blue, yes. Well, you know. Yeah, at one time, you don't have to eat them at the same time, but... but okay, so there's a tip for you. Try almonds and blueberries. What are those going to do for people well, energy -wise? First of all, almonds, that's the only fat. It's the only protein. And then we all know that blueberries are a superfood. It's an elite carb. 
And that's going to give you energy, not just that, it's anti-cancer as well. So you're doing things to protect longevity and you're doing things for energy. And so we know that good fats do a world for the body as far as skin, immune system, but not just that, energy. So we don't think about it that way. So maybe try blueberries and almonds. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's go to drink and sleep and then we'll, we'll get into some, get in deep. Some of these things might be intuitive, but when we talk about drinking good hydration, I usually tell people, you know, drink about a liter a day. People usually hear, drink about two liters a day, 32 ounces, in other words. But the thing that I have found is that if you focus on getting that one liter in and be consistent with it, you'll change your life. Because when you have other things that you're drinking, juices, like fruit juices, all right, organic fruit juices, like the one I had this morning, I had an amazing lemon, apple, ginger uh, juice that has water in it. So that goes along and adds to that one liter. So you have a one liter of pure water. So you're saying getting enough fluids and hydration yeah. helps your energy. Absolutely. Now something I think we may get into later that I have a question for is what sure. do you think about caffeine, yeah. about energy drinks, right. Monster, yeah. or even like Happy well, pills up. We're gonna get into that later. We're gonna get into that later. I've gotta hold my horses. Dip in. You do have to hold your horses, but that's my job. We're gonna we're gonna unleash Dr. Jason. Oh my gosh. Here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sleep. Touch on sleep for just a second. Very good. I think the number one thing people tell me all the time is that I can't get sleep because of racing thoughts. That's the number one thing that I hear. Now there are other things, of course. But you have to deal with the racing thoughts first. How do you deal? How do you deal with racing? I think well, I think that is a big thing. It Ruminating. Is a, it is a big before thing. you go to sleep. You have these anxieties. Your mind is just running. So how do you help people? With well, that? you know, sometimes people can't get sleep because they're worried about a bill or worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. So what you want to do is pick up your pick up your journal, write a possible solution. Write down ten possible solutions because one of the things I found is that the mind will accept a possible construct that you put down on paper. And even though it might not be the answer that actually gets you to your goal, you'll be able to sleep better because your mind at least is saying, hey, you know what, we got something working here. You know, I, we're working on this. I'm gonna like get some that. sleep because, you know, we like got, we're ruminating on some ideas. That's a great practical thing. So you're worrying about something, you're at the end of the day, put it down on paper, put some possible solutions down there, let it go. And let it go. Let your brain do the work overnight Tomorrow you might have the answer. And get some sleep. At least you'll be able to. That's a great. That's a great suggestion. And people can get answers when they wake up in the morning. People get answers in their sleep even. Now, now let me. Okay, Mr. Energy Doctor. Let me hit you with the reality. I think of what most people do, right? Because there's a big industry out there that's like, here, coffee, you know, soda, energy drinks, right. caffeine in a pill. Oh, there's all these things like, oh, you want energy? Yeah. Take this pill, this supplement, this whatever. But yeah. you didn't talk about that at all on your meds. Yeah, no, of course not. What because do you think about all of that? You know, basically supplemental energy, caffeine, all that stuff. Well, first of all, you gotta get out of the matrix. You don't have to do all that to have energy. You see- I feel like that is the that is the limiting belief. Like people yeah. are like, that's what you have to do. Well, you do those things when you don't wanna do anything yourself. When you don't want to exercise, when you don't want to be proactive and eat right, you're going to take something that's real simple, all right, and leave it up to that. But that doesn't change how you think. It doesn't change your habits. It doesn't change your life. In fact, it could actually make things worse. It's good stuff. Tell me more about that. So, and, and we're going to be judgmental. I've used caffeine before to get me through too. a long night. You know, it's a tool. Yeah, it's a tool. Sometimes you can use it, but I don't think that's what you want to be your main fuel during right. the day for energy. You don't want that to be your main thing. First of all, it's okay to use it if you are driving and you feel tired, to stay focused, to stay alive, drink some caffeine. If you are uh, on a long shift and you have to perform, it's nothing wrong with taking caffeine. I've even had a little caffeine right before taking an exam or something like that because it studies, a boost. Well, it does. studies do show that it does increase your thinking. It increases your alertness, okay? And you yeah. can use that to actually capitalize on a lot of situations. Or maybe a little pre-workout before you go into the gym. Nothing's to... wrong with that. Yeah. The problem is when you wake up in the morning, and the first thing you do is you pop that soda or that energy drink so you feel like you can get through the day, that's a problem. And it shows a little bit of dependency. 
What about morning coffee? I think a lot of people use coffee to wake up. What do you say I about that? I love that, and I talk about this in my book. The thing with coffee is simply this, and I'm not, I'm not gonna fight people over this. Coffee actually is shown to be very healthy. Coffee beans are very healthy, but when we talk about when you get the three to four cups, okay, that can be destructive. Not only does caffeine cause you to lose you know, fluid through urination, thereby causing you to be dehydrated, Ooh. it can cause issues when it comes to headaches, it can cause issues even with breathing. I'm talking about dehydration can cause things like that. There's a study that shows that 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated and don't even know it. Mm. And so coffee can do that to you, just so, like any other source of diuretic. But the deal is simply this, if you're gonna drink coffee, keep it to one or two cups and be on with your day. What happened? Are you saying people can do, talk to me in terms of energy, okay, one or two. Again, I think people who are like, man, but I need those extra cups of coffee to keep going throughout yeah. the day. What's a better way? Well, a better way, I tell people sometimes what you may want to do is drink decaf. If it's because you like the taste or it's more of a habit kind of thing, switch to decaf. But if it's the caffeine, you've got to slowly detox your way back down to one or two. Especially if you have sleep problems, you shouldn't be drinking anything with, uh, with caffeine. They have anything within together. a range of 10 to 12 hours, caffeine stays in your body. 10 to 12 hours. Wow. You, you may, so you have to detox. You have to balance your life and get it on a healthier program. I'm not saying stop coffee. Drink coffee the rest of your life. That's okay. But listen, don't let it be your source of energy. That's the key. So many things I want to get to. Let's let's stay a little bit on supplemental kind of caffeine. So so we talked about coffee. Let's talk about let's talk about energy drinks. Yeah. I feel like most people when when we start talking about energy, they're like, I got monster. I don't need what you have to offer. Right. How is this better than an energy drink? Well, a lot of the energy drinks, you know, they will sell you on that they have high levels of B12 in it. But if you actually went to a lab and did a blood test, most people are B12 deficient. So they're selling you on something that you actually don't need. The active ingredient, once again, is the high sugar and the caffeine. Now we don't need the sugar that's in these energy drugs. Taurine and some of these other yeah, we don't, well, so some stimulants. Of the, right, yeah, we don't need that. We're not, most people aren't deficient in some of the good core nutrients that we get every day in good food. But the key is simply this, when you have that extra sugar, it does cause you to crash. And you may not know it because you're so used to it. So over time, that sugar, that's the bad carbohydrate. When we talk about good and bad carbs, that sugar can cause you to become more dependent on caffeine, to become more dependent on any type of stimulant to keep you motivated. And it can lead to headaches. It can lead to further dehydration. It can do so many bad things that you actually don't realize are going on in your mind that you just don't want. So the main thing that drink Half, you know, energy drink is because of the unwanted sugar, the bad sugar you don't need in your system. And I would encourage people to stop that just for that reason alone, really. Not bad. What do you think about energy pills or other supplements? You it know, sounds like you don't really recommend any of that no, stuff. No, I mean, again, it goes back to whole food. Making sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck through the good nutrients that come from the soil, that are in your foods, that you're putting in your body. I hear that, and I'm like, you're a hippie, it doesn't work, give me a break, you know, like, go farm your own yard, Jason. Here's the key. Farmer if you want Jason. more energy, the first thing I tell people is, what do you want energy for? Okay. Is it just because you want to feel this certain charge? Yeah, You know. I like that. So, yeah, I think we all like that. I think we all can get more done if we had felt like we had a certain charge. Yep. But it's not really that charge that you want. You want to be able to be able to feel passionate about what you're doing, motivated about what you're doing, intrigued about what you're doing, and at the same time, that's you good. want to have the endurance to do whatever it is, to complete whatever task that's on your to-do list, and get the job done. That's what endurance. you really want. So that's you what don't you really want, want this. Exactly. You want. you want to feel good in your body. Yeah. You want to feel that your body can do anything. You don't want to feel sluggish. You don't want to feel like you need to take several naps throughout the day. So you're probably not going to get that good feeling, that endurance from sugar, caffeine, which are always going to go out of your system and go down to you need another lasting. one. And you got it. It doesn't last. It's transient. 
So instead, your system meds. Right. What's the Movie, first one? drink, sleep. I forgot. <laughs> Movie, drink, sleep. That's going to give people a more, more endurance, lasting, and, and really more of what they really want out of this. That's going to help you to master your body, to heal your body. That's good. In the correct way. That's what we need to do. Yeah, this is really, this stuff's real good. Okay, let me see what else I got here. This is good. You walk in the talk too, Mr. Energy Doctor. Well, you know, you have to because you Dr. are Energy your best. Dr. Energy Doctor. You are your best testimony. Speaking of you, how'd you get into medicine? How'd you end up here? Good question. Yeah, you're, so you, you're in Florida now. I'm in Orlando, are from, Florida. Are you from Florida? Where? No, so I'm from Michigan. I went. Oh. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. We're in the final uh, four right now. I guess his team's trying to get there. Uh, I'm not sure if they will. Rooting the Jayhawks on today. March Madness, baby. But we do know the Wolverines are there, right? You, you went to Michigan under, undergrad? I went to Michigan undergrad. Uh, yeah. Then I, okay. I told you I went to Notre Dame. Yeah, you, you, you did. Last time we played, we won. Yeah, well, I don't even remember that. It's not even relevant. It's been a couple years. I don't even know. But I, w I went We to, are playing again this year. We are. 2018 and at that's, Notre Dame. I'm really excited about that because these are classic football games. And I'm a football fanatic. Are you really? I'm a football fanatic. I think I'm probably going to that. Yeah, well, really? Yeah. Are you giving me a ticket? I'll go. We might be able to get All you right. a ticket. If we work that out, you might, you might see. I don't know if you really want to go to that game and see that up front. Yeah. Live well, and watch that team. You know, just... the thing about that is we got we got Jimmy Harbaugh there. He'll, he'll take care of everything. He knows, he knows he knows how the Californians work and everything like that. He's oh, brought the, man. He's brought the success gonna, to Michigan. Uh, it's gonna, we'll put that aside. Yeah, so we'll tell me, aside. so you're from Michigan. Med school. U, U of M at Michigan. So U of M undergrad went to med school at Michigan State. Yeah, so the, I think Isn't exactly. that the dark side? It is the dark side. My wife's from the dark side. A lot of oh. my friends are from the dark side. But. That's good. So, but you're an MD. I'm an MD. Good. So you're a real doctor. You're not just some. You're not some clown. Not just a TV doctor. You're not, yeah, right? Like, you're not just pretending to, you're no. actually a doctor. And you're, so you, how did you get to Florida? And, and did you, what did you start doing? You did family medicine residency. Yes, in where? Michigan. Where? In, in Michigan. How did you end up in Florida? And now how did you do, you do concierge medicine? I do concierge medicine. So how, tell me Simple that story. Simple story. Hey, listen, my wife and I met at a Bible study off the campus of uh, Michigan State. Our church actually moved from Lansing, Michigan to Orlando, Florida. The whole congregation came. It was oh, awesome. Wow. And I go to Dream Life Christian Center, another denominational Christian church, and it's an amazing place. In fact, my business coach, who encouraged me to write the book and encouraged mm -hmm. me to go into concierge medicine, Dr. Mm -hmm. Stacia Pierce, who's amazing. Your coach is Dr. Stacia Pierce. Stacia Pierce, okay. Oh, she is, uh, she's the number one millionaire maker. She's amazing. And, you know, the thing about her is that, you know, she encouraged me to write this book. She encouraged me to get in concert medicine. She saw that what was really important was to give people and patients more value. People are sick and tired of waiting in the doctor's office. People are sick and tired of waiting and, you know, you know, showing up at 10 o'clock, being seen at 11 o'clock, yeah. and then only getting 15 minutes. Yeah. People were getting frustrated, but not just that. The doctors, even myself, were getting burnt out. We're getting frustrated. What did you did family medicine residency in Michigan? It moved to Florida with the church. Did you start private practice? What did you so do I, after residency? I was, I was I was in a uh, private practice in uh, Lansing, Michigan, right off of Lansing, Michigan. Okay. And then we moved here, and then I got into uh, a group in Orlando, which is an insurance-based group. Okay. But while I was doing that, so you were in private practice in Florida. Yes, I was in private practice. Uh, no, in, Mich in Michigan, and then I got into a big, large group practice in Florida. Okay, group, okay. While I was doing that, I was writing this book. And, and this was how long ago? Five years ago? Um, a couple we years started ago? the book actually in um, 2013, 2012, Five, 2013. Five, six years ago? Yeah, it was actually published in 2012. And, um, and so when we were doing that, I started getting a following from just the blogging and the writing and things like that. And I was still doing insurance and medicine. One of the things I found... Insurance medicine, that's interesting. Yeah. I haven't heard it called that before, but it's a good well, word. Well, I call it that because, again, I feel like 
you know, when you're doing insurance medicine, I did a blog on this. Most, no, primary care doctors, doctors in general, usually have to see 16 patients in the first half day just to break even. Yeah. And then the next 16 that they see, for a total of 32, that, that's where they make a profit. So they're motivated on seeing as many patients as possible in order to provide income for you know, their To so um, make staff, their money, yeah, but sure. But also to make money personally. And when you do that, it kind of creates this atmosphere that I call cattle call, where the patients are kind of just, just cattle kind of just being, you know, huddled That's through. That's the old model. It's the old model. And people, you know, um, you know, in one way, the benefit for the patient is that they have a third party payer. They have the insurance, right? Yeah. But there's no freedom in that. Concierge medicine is private medicine that opens the floodgates and now the freedom and the care so, back to you. So wait, so how long did you do private practice or group practice? I opened, so I did that for about five years. And then why did you change? How, how was that for you for five years? I just, you know, I got, to be honest, I really got tired. I really got tired, unmotivated of having to, uh, to keep up with seeing a patient every 15 minutes. You can burn out. It, and there are people that are burning out, doctors. It's like the structure of the practice, really, just that 15 minute, yeah. moving people them would, through the... People would come in with 30 minute problems in a 15 minute slot. Yeah. And so the person behind them, of course, would be unhappy because you're seeing them late. So you didn't like how that was structured to practice medicine, how you were. No. So you changed, and what did you do? Like. Well, I mean, I, if somebody were in, if there were a doctor who were like, hmm, I agree with them, maybe I'll do the same thing. Yeah. How, what, how would they change? What did well, you do? How there's did a lot of different here? ways a person can get into concierge medicine, but me personally, one of the things I did, first of all, I have a large concierge medicine practice now in Orlando, but in 2016, I started out with one patient. Yeah. And I just took great care of them. And through word of mouth, through social media and marketing, it grew. And then I took on corporate clients as well. Um, and that's how you, a good concierge doctor grows their practice through good word of mouth and the folks following you. Come I'm on, you, We're live and we're outside. Come on, Stuff like, Yeah, come on. Hang with us. Hey, we're live. There you go. We're live. That's right. We're fixing that. But good concierge doctors grow their practice through good practice and word of mouth. So tell me what you like about how you practice now compared well, to before. I get to spend about an hour with each patient. Okay. I can spend more if I need to, and sometimes I do, but it's not rushed. They're not rushed. I'm not rushed. So you get more time. More time, and we're always on time. Yeah. So people can count on that. They can plan their day around that. I give every one of my patients my cell number. They can call me at any time, any day of the week, holidays, whatever so it is. So you feel like you're giving better service to your patients. Absolutely. How do you feel as a doctor? What's it well, do for you? Well, one, I have more time. Two, because when you give people more access, they actually call you less. Not because you want that to happen, but they call you less because they know you're always there. Interesting. They know you're there. They know that they can call you. Listen, there's no rush to get in Friday at 4.30 because the office is closing at 5 because they can call me at 8, 8 p.m. at Friday. They can call me Saturday morning. It's an, it's an interesting... It takes the rush out of it. Yeah. And when you take the rush out of anything, now you can do things at your own pace for the patient and for the doctor. Now let me ask you a couple questions before we move on to something else. One, how's the pay compared to before? Well, again, I'm setting uh, the rates and I'm able to adjust it for my patients, but it's better. It's better because so you make a little more money. I make more money, no doubt about that. And you take off the ceiling. You can only get paid so much in an insurance-based model. And in yeah. a concierge model, uh, the sky's the limit, okay? Um, basically, you know, um, you know, I charge, um, on average, around $3,000 a patient, uh, annual fee. And, you know, the awesome thing about that is that, you know, people aren't paying co-pays. Every time they come to see me or I see them, you know, we're not swiping their card or anything like that. It's a model that people can live with. Now, concierge doctors get paid whether they're seeing a patient or not. We are on retainer. And again, the beauty about that is that, you know, there might be some days where you see one or two patients. And the beauty of that is that, you know, for the person that you're seeing, they know that, hey, I'm the only one you're seeing today. I came to see you. Yeah. This is for you. 
we're putting this around you. You get pretty busy on flu season. Flu season is something that you're always <laughs> hustling, no matter what you do. No matter what yeah. you do as a conscious doctor. But you know what? People heal better. They heal faster. So you got concierge going. You got the book. What what else are you doing kind of with your entrepreneur yeah. aspect to this? Because that's well, interesting as a doctor. Yeah, exactly. And I appreciate you asking that. I think a lot of us just think, oh, there's some options. You work for a hospital. You work for a group. Maybe you can go out. But interesting a lot of people enough, don't know a lot about this. Well, interesting enough, not only am I um, the founder CEO of Littleton Concierge Med Medicine, but I am also the chief of family medicine at Orlando Regional. Most people may not know about Orlando Regional, but is, Orlando Regional... Is that, is that like you're the chief of the hospital, or is that a residency program, or academic? No, what I'm, does that mean? I'm, well, in other words, I'm the chairman of the family medicine department at Orlando Regional. At the run, hospital? At the hospital, and I run the department of family medicine at Orlando Regional Medical Center. That is the hospital that uh, actually took care of um, the POS victim. Oh, right, yeah, okay. you had said something about yeah, that. Yeah, so we are a major hospital. And what was that like? Well, at the time, I wasn't chairman, I wasn't there. I was actually now, remind, remind everybody when that was and what happened. Well, that was a, that was a couple of years ago, and unfortunately, um, you know, several people... Uh, this was, the, was this the Orlando nightclub shooting? Yes, that's, that's what it was. Okay. And it was Orlando Regional Medical Center that serviced these uh, people. And, you know, again... Now, um, did you take care of anybody? Were you on I, at that I, time? No, I was actually out of town. I was in New York. In yeah. fact, I was on a flight um, with one of the people... Um, with one of the uh, newscasters from, uh, I think, NBC. Yeah. I'm trying to think of his name right now, who was flying down there. Um, he, I think he does um, their night show. Yeah. Um, not sure, but... Yeah. Um, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of his name. Anyway, but... Uh, it was, it was uh, a tragic event, and um, you know my hospital, you know, serviced the victims and took care of them and took great care. And I know the city of Orlando is proud of what ORMC has done. Uh, I'm proud of what ORMC has done, and you know it was it was something that um, I, I can say that Orlando was impacted greatly. I mean. Um, one of the things I will say is that, you know, Orlando is a strong city, and I think that uh, we've come back stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it, you can always, the thing I was thinking about when you were saying that was, you can, there's a lot of things you can focus on when you have these horrible mass tragedies, but one thing that will always be true is the medical community, doctors, nurses, everybody, we're always going to be there. Yeah. We're going to take care of people when they're hurt. Absolutely. Shout these awful things, like... You know, we're never going to give up. So there's always hope in these yeah. terrible situations. Right. Yeah. Communities respond years later. You're not going to quit. You're not going to go away. Right. Yeah, you know? exactly. exactly. Wow, that's intense. So here you are now, an entrepreneur. you got your book. you got your concierge gig. It sounds like things are going pretty good. And you're happier now as a doctor probably than you were six, seven years ago in group practice. It's about spreading my message. It's about, I mean, I'm passionate about helping people live long lives, being full of energy for the purpose of getting what their plan and purpose is mm -hmm. done. And I think that's what motivates me. I think this book, Wellspring, is about helping you accomplish your life's dream. And when you think about accomplishing your life's dream, you have to live a long life. The more, the longer you live, the more people you can touch. The Longevity. Can, the, well, the more you can spread your message. But you have to have it have to be if we had the type of energy for example someone like a Beyonce had where would we be now of course you know Beyonce is a person there's a lot of things Beyonce got that I don't have we <laughs> all know that she has talents that you know most people don't have but here's the key we all have talents and we all have a, a special place in this world and being able to articulate that, it takes time, it takes energy, and it takes connecting your purpose to make changes so that you can have that healthy life, so you can communicate your message. Yeah, I love that you just go right to mission. Mission and purpose, and well, you need some energy That's why I asked you, do you remember when I said, why do you want energy? Yeah. People come to me all the time and say, hey, I need more energy, and my first question is, why? What, what are we trying to accomplish? What is your big why? What's if you don't give me something sustainable, 
I'm not going to be able to construct a plan so that you, how would you know if you had the energy to actually complete it? You have to be able to have a purpose for what you're doing. And then I can help you with the feel to get there. That's what it's all about. There you go. Look at that. You're charged. He just jazzing me up. You just keep going. Goosebumps. You're Goosebumps. on a roll. Goosebumps. We're rolling here in Southern California with Dr. Jason. I Littleton. love what I do. Let me, so right along those lines, when you're talking about getting energy for your passion and your purpose and your mission, talk to me about the perfect day. Yeah. What is the perfect day? How can well, people have the perfect day? A lot of times people ask me about what I should be eating to lose weight. And I know that most of the people who ask me this question have tried several different things. Okay? Yeah. Uh, this is not the first rodeo for them. And so when I talk about the perfect day, I talk about using one day out of seven, okay, in, in a week. And you take the six out of seven days, work on what you're going to eat on that perfect day, work on how you're going to exercise that perfect day so that when that perfect day comes, you are hitting it. You're not getting to lunch and say, oops, I made a mistake. I had a hamburger when I was supposed to have a power lunch. No. You spent the last six days focusing on how to have that perfect day. You knew that when lunchtime came around, you were supposed to have a salad. And I want you to be able to gain the confidence, the strength, and the credibility that comes with doing what you set out to do. And when you have that perfect day, and you master that, and you get that under your belt, you add another perfect day. Eventually, we're talking about perfect weeks. Perfect month. I see. Perfect I'm years. Building them up. We are building up. Time. So let me bring you. Let me bring you down a little bit into the details. Give me an average person's start at wake up. Yeah. And give me the habits and the things that you think are essential for this perfect day that will give them that energy. Yeah. Perfect. So most people, when they wake up in the morning, they'll hit snooze. Well, what we want to do is the night before, we want to think through our day. And we want to know that when five o'clock hits, we're up. We're not hitting snooze. We're up. Now, if you, you go get up, up at five o'clock, I don't get up at five o'clock. But if you get up at five o'clock, <laughs> I want to make sure my perfect day starts at ten. Yeah, no, kidding. There you go. <laughs> but wherever your perfect day starts, you want to make sure that you're not delaying it. Don't hit the snooze button. Get up at five um, if that's what you want to do. All right. And then start acting the plan. So if you had thought or pre-thought out that you were going to go exercise, you know, have your gym shoes by your bed. Have your shorts laid out. So you pop out of bed, you put do your you gym shoes on. Do you recommend everybody exercise in the beginning? I do. Most because people. Motiva studies show that motivation is higher in the morning. It's harder to go to get the gym. Get up and like get up, pee, drink some water, go exercise. Yeah. Let me give you a reason why. Because not only is motivation higher, but people burn calories better when they start out with exercise at the beginning of the day. Do you think fasted exercise is, is a thing? I've heard either way. Yeah, well, I think I think that when people, um, you said fasted exercise? Like exercising in the morning yeah. before you eat oh, breakfast. Got it. Well, I would do it this way. I would at least do a granola bar or something like that. I don't think it's good to exercise on an empty stomach. I think you have some to put the, something in there. There's some of these fitness folks for a while that reckon, well, there's an added benefit yeah. if you exercise you, first. You have to consult your doctor, and if you're talking to me, I'm going to tailor it towards who you are. If you have diabetes, if you have anything that can lead to hypoglycemia, like you do not want to hit the gym or the street running, and you haven't put anything in the tank. Yeah, you that's have, a good point. You have to have something there. Mostly, again, when you sleep for eight hours, if you're sleeping for eight hours, you're basically fasting. We tell people... If you're going to get labs in the morning, go to bed at midnight, don't eat anything, go get your labs at 8 in the morning. That's basically fasting. All right, Dr. J, I want to get you back on... Oh, Dr. J just came up with that. That's Let's pretty go. good. That's pretty good. Has, has anybody here. ever called you Dr. J before? All the time. No, I thought I was the first one. Okay, so this is starting the night before. You're saying plan out your day. Yeah. Visualize it. Kind of you've got plan the things you're going to do, like a to-do list, or how do you... Well, you... that journal that you're using to write down racing thoughts, you can also use your journal to write down the schematic of your day. Get up in the morning, don't hit snooze, and you would say exercise. Right. Give me a general prescription. 30 minutes of cardio. Now again, an hour back. of weightlifting, again, five minutes of I'm walking. consistent with my message. I'll go okay. back to the five minutes, okay? Just 
five minutes. Most people I work with are so busy that even finding five minutes can seem. Like so you would say five minutes of high intensity. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Five minutes of high intensity. Get the jog in. Get the run in. Now, that's just a place where you start. If you're already in a rhythm, if you know you're going to exercise and be consistent with it week in and week out. You can do the 30 minutes. No, this is good because I sometimes I don't have enough time to do that, but five minutes, that's probably a good start. You can feel good because if you do the five minutes, you're, you're basically revving your engine. You're yeah. burning calories throughout the day. So when you eat foods throughout the day, your body's actually processing it a whole lot better as if you didn't exercise. So I like this, even just five minutes. Okay, so so what's next? The, the ideal day for the average person, you well, some you, high intensity you, exercise and then what? The night before, I again recommended that you think your day out so you should have pre-thought what you're going to eat out so you should have a breakfast plan come back shower up you dress eat breakfast exactly okay you have to take care of your body after you exercise so what do you recommend it? what's a good breakfast give me give me one Love example it. I like steel oats with fruit okay I always incorporate fruit oats, whatever I'm eating. fruit smoothie you want to have a smoothie put some protein in it or a smoothie or is this and and it depends what your goals are if your goals are to build muscle you're probably gonna want a smoothie with the steel bowl. Yep, exactly. Exactly, there you go. Put some plant-based uh, protein in there. Get the protein in. Nourish your muscles, build muscle. But if your goal is weight loss, you might wanna wake up and just do the smoothie and not the steel oats and fruit. And All right. you can- Oats, fruit, smoothie, good. Yep, there you go. What are we doing next? So again, you're planning out your snacks. I told you that the snacks that I highly recommend are things like What do you like between breakfast and lunch? Almonds so, and blueberries? Yeah, I love that. And you can, you know, instead of blueberries, you can do raspberries. Instead of almonds, you could even do, you know, like things like cashews or walnuts. Okay, snack, you really like berries and nuts. Yes, yes. Okay, take me to lunch. And and we're just, otherwise, you're just doing your thing. Yeah, you're, exactly. At work, maybe you're having a glass or two, a cup, cup or two of coffee. Right, you're doing your thing. Doing what you know, you're doing your job, etc. Exactly, and okay. I tell people, I tell people, you know, couple your water intake with your snacks. Okay, I usually tell people to drink like juice with their meals because you you digest your food better when you have something like an organic juice than if you have water. Water acts more of a solvent. Okay, and it kind of dilutes things. So when things go through your GI tract, you're not necessarily picking up all the nutrients you would as if you had another, you know, nutrient-based liquid that you were drinking. Okay. Okay. Like orange juice or apple juice, again, whole product, organic product. So that makes a difference. For lunch, let's go to lunch for lunch. So wait a minute, let me, before we even get to lunch, what do you think about, like, in the morning, do you recommend meditation or prayer or some kind of mor morning ritual where you see the rest of your day? Like, yeah, in the you morning, you wake up, you know, you just before you exercise or after you exercise, just, first of all, again, they're thinking through and visualizing having a perfect, successful day. If you have a meeting later in the day, see yourself being successful. See yourself getting that, you know, getting that account. See yourself, you know, landing that big deal. See yourself successful. If you don't see yourself that way, then, you know, you're not going to take in the right thoughts, the right attitudes to be successful. But when you do do that, you are nine out of 10 times better in terms of having the chance to land that big deal, having a, a, a great impression, landing whatever it is you're trying to accomplish if you think through it first. How long, so visualizing exactly. the rest of the day, 10 minutes, what are we talking about? Honestly, I wouldn't, I do about 10, 15 minutes and then you have to move on. Yeah, 10, 15 them. movements, move on. So if you get the five minutes of exercise, 15 minutes of meditation, that's only 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. All right, so you're doing your thing. We got the bre we got breakfast. We got snack and berries. Snack and berries. We got berries and nuts for a snack. Take me to lunch. Yeah. So lunch, I love this. I tell people I have a power salad. The awesome benefits of having a power salad is you can't sounds like an oxymoron. Power salad. Well, yeah, it's powerful because you get you get the good veggies in. Okay, and you you want to get that because you want the antioxidants. Not just that, you want to be able to. Um, you want to be able to, you know, stay light on your feet. If you eat anything too heavy, you're gonna have, you're gonna run that two o'clock, that three o'clock feeling where you're gonna feel sluggish. You're gonna feel like you want to take a nap. So you're like a like, lighter lunch, so that it, you don't kind of go right. down. So you don't go down. So you, like salad, veggies, and some kind and of protein. And it also keeps you away from processed sugars. Yeah, There's right. no processed sugar in salad. Okay. 
And that's the thing that's going to cause people to feel like they do want to take a nap around two or three. Yeah, be careful with the, the dressing. Sometimes you can get that's, some sugar in there. You're exactly right, and you have to do your research on what you know dressing you want to apply to that. And you know you don't always have to. Like we're talking on. chicken salad, fish salad. Do you got some protein in there? Yeah, you know I usually tell people you can add chicken, with it. you can add salmon with it, you can you know you can add fish, you can add meat to it, but you don't have to. I, I do push a two-thirds vegan diet, so to speak, yeah. and you see that on my website. I have a food map on there that you can get for free uh, at jasonandd.com, but on that food map, it actually itemizes out the different foods throughout the different categories, lunch. A guide to you know, help you figure it's, it's out what guide. you can eat. It, okay. it itemizes it from breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and even the snacks in between, and even the hydration throughout the day. Okay. So take me to the afternoon snack, dinner, and let's finish the day. Yeah. So the afternoon snack, again, I'm still staying. And I want to know after this, I want yeah. to know what you do. Yeah. I want to know what your day Great is. Great question. Walk so, that talk, doctor. Exactly. So when we talk about the afternoon, again, I'm still sticking, I'm still sticking to the nuts and berries, okay? It's just a snack. It's just a snack. I want you to exchange that from, you know, like I said, potato chips, candy bars, or anything you can pick up at a convenience store, okay? It might be convenient, but it's not necessary. Uh, you know, nutrition, like nurturing your body. That's good. Exchange the junk you have to for what? It. It's, a, it's, a, it's like an oil. What are they exchanging it for? They're changing it for elite proteins, elite fats, elite carbs. Like what? Give me some examples. So again, you know, when you are eating things such as vegetables and fruits, or what, you know, if you want to eat celery, if you want to eat cap, um, um, carrots, again, you're getting vitamins, you're getting nutrients, you're getting things that are gonna help you unleash energy in your body. Give me a couple of examples of your afternoon snack that you like to, to go to. Personally, yeah. just like I said, I do love the blueberries and almonds. And berries I and almonds, give me another one. All the time. Another thing that I really like is I like granola, okay, and bananas. Great source of potassium. It helps people keep their potassium up. When the electrolytes are in balance, you do feel energized, you feel charged. Okay, it's another thing, and not just that. Granola and bananas, what else? One of the things I like is just, you know, bread and butter apples because of the fiber. It keeps your GI tract moving. Not just that. One of the things that you also want to consider is you want to consider even such, 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 such you want to consider foods that also have a high in protein uh, uh, intake. And so one of the things I'll sometimes do is have like a peanut butter sandwich. How about that? Peanut butter sandwich. If you were into the weightlifting, it's if you want to gain weight, peanut butter sandwiches will help you gain weight. For that goal sometimes i get a little butter. pudge with peanut butter because i like it you can sometimes i can go a little too far with it let's do this let's i want you to finish the day then i want to hear your day i want to go over here to some questions so for those people that are on awesome. the, the instagram live we're going to come to you put some questions on there for us for the energy doctor right here we're going to come over and answer some questions in just a second so finish off the i can't day. wait to do that finish off the ideal day we've got snacks Talk to me about dinner and then kind of the dinner, eating routine. You know, again, I talked to you about a two-thirds vegan diet and dinner, you know, I eat meat, go ahead and have something sensible like chicken breast or salmon. Um, that's lean what I usually protein. do. Yeah, lean protein. Um, you know, and I tell people that, you know, don't feel bad. You know, you don't have to you, you don't have to worry about, you know, having um, I want you talking to them. They, they get to see this on the side. This is our this is our guy. All right, I'm gonna start with. Does anybody have any questions on this thing? Let me finish this. Uh, I want to tell you that when you talk yeah, about, when, when you talk about eating meat, you want to you want to have uh, you don't want to go more than like you know two times you know within a week. Okay, we want to limit it to that. When we talk about red meat, you know, one to one and a half days in a week of red meat. And I, and I really do limit it to that. Uh, people ask me all the time, do I eat something such as steak? I do. I'm going to be honest with you, I do. I love steak, but I'm not eating it every day. People ask me about fried chicken. I love fried chicken too, but I don't eat it every day. And that's the key. Moderation. You want to do things in moderation. When you moderation. look at studies of centurions, people who live to 100, they'll tell you, it's not any specific little formula that they do. It is moderation. They take care of their bodies. They don't do extremes. Yeah. Okay. And totally you, with you on moderation. And, and when you do, when you when you take care of yourself that way, okay, you're making sure that you're not putting your body in any type of extreme harm, and that's the or damage, and that's the key to it. 
finish the day off. So you, you're home, you eat. What's you know what's the nighttime routine? Nighttime routine again consists of thinking through the next day, working on any project that I might have. Because again, as an entrepreneur, um, I'm always being creative, I'm always thinking about projects. So most people after five o'clock, most people don't know when they sit on the couch. When they sit on the couch, I call that turning the throttle down. Once you sit on the couch and you take you turn the throttle down or you stop, you know, that kind of that rapid metabolism type movement, yeah. it is hard to get up again. If you look at your day, as when you wake up in the morning, just running down that runway, full throttle, taking off, and then when you land the plane at five o'clock, there's a problem. Because if you have projects, if you have books you want to read, and this is where people really want energy. People want energy to actually do the project after work. So you would say come home and keep going. You have to keep going. You have to keep going. You keep that throttle going until you're done. And until then, when? Nine well, or ten? Or until what your you... goals are done. There's not a specific time where I say, hey, the magic time where you go to bed is 11 o'clock or uh, midnight. You go to bed when you got your goals done that day. Because I found that when you don't get your goals done, you actually feel demotivated. And that demotivation actually causes you to feel tired because you lowers get, your energy. it lowers your energy. Part of energy is not just the foods we eat, but it also is the attitude and the perspective we take. And when we feel that we're accomplishing things in life, we actually feel charged. You can feel physically tired, but you can feel passionate about what you're doing. So much so that you'll keep going even when your body says stop. And that's, that's what people want. And you do that through a combination of good foods, accomplishing your goal, making sure that you're drinking good water, making sure that you have energy for the <clears throat> purpose of your life. That's good. So how about what are you recommending before people go to sleep? I recommend, that people, I recommend that people journalize yeah. so that, that they can deal with raising thoughts and they can also think through the next day. I recommend that people kind of go through a nice bed routine. Ten minutes, routine, a nice ten bed minutes routine. in the journal. Yeah. Whatever. A nice bed routine incorpor incorporates meditation in terms of visualizing what your next day is going to be like or yeah. the week or the month or the year. You should focus on the big picture part of your life at night. So that when you wake up in the morning, you can focus on the incremental things that help you get there. So you want to do those things. When you do those things at night, okay, and then you go to sleep, your mind actually subconsciously still thinks. And you can come up with answers and ideas. So I agree you with wake you. Up in the morning, I actually agree with you. You're ready to go. So that's why journalizing at night is so key and so important. But when it comes to getting ready to go to bed at night, you know, you want to do some other things, such as sometimes people drink tea, and I recommend that in order to calm yourself down, to relax. You want to get yourself in a nice relaxation mood so you can sleep easy. And sometimes that means turning off the iPhones or turning off the phones, turning off the TV, turning off the Screen radio. Time. Moving certain, yeah, bills and things out of your bedroom. You shouldn't have it anyway. I tell people you should make your bedroom like a spa. When you go to a spa, you immediately relax. Okay? Oh, okay. I like make, that analogy. When you make your bedroom like a spa, you'll get better sleep. If your bedroom doesn't make you feel like exhaling the moment you walk into it, you're doing something totally wrong. Interesting. Good you, your, your, your Good house. Bit on sleep. Well, your home should feel like a defense, so to speak. So when you walk in your home, usually people take a deep breath, like, I'm home, you know. But then when you walk into your bedroom. It should almost feel like a sanctuary for you. So when you walk into even that level of relaxation, you're kind of like, okay, wait a minute. This is my bedroom. Everyone in the world can't come here. This is a place <laughs> where there's solitude, there is protection, there's peace. I'm not worried in my bedroom. I don't have arguments in my bedroom. I don't, I'm not dealing and paying bills in my bedroom. This is where- You're very disciplined about yeah. creating this sleep place Yeah, in your house. exactly. And when you do that, you want, not only will you get better sleep, but you'll be less anxious. You'll live a stress-free life. You'll be able to just, you know, come home and let those restorative healing abilities that your body has, go ahead and take control and so that you can get the rest and relaxation you need for the next energy. Step. I like it. Yeah, you have to do that. I like it. So let's summarize the day. Your day begins really the day before, kind of visualizing the, the night of. Yeah. You get up in the morning, don't hit snooze. Five five minutes of high intensity exactly. exercise. Come back, 
a little bit of visualizing the day, again, kind of similar to the night before. Eating breakfast. Eat a good breakfast, which for you, you're saying is either oats and fruits or a protein smoothie. Right, right. Snack of berries and almonds is right, kind exactly. of your go-to, like exactly. blueberries and almonds, berries and nuts. Lunch is a power salad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some protein on mine. Nothing wrong with that, I do too. You're, you're hydrating at each step throughout this. Afternoon, similarly, you might have a pe peanut butter sandwich, again, nuts, berries, right. banana. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what else did you say Something in there? Something sensible at night, like chicken breast. Dinner, so Fish. dinner, kind of a lean protein, right. veggies. And then another point you made, don't come home and quit. Keep pursuing your Keep goals when you going. come home. Oh. Let's hear what, let's hear what, I want to hear. A good example. Let me, let me set this up again. Sure. So, so I want to hear what Dr. Jason, America's energy doctor, I want to hear what your day looks like. Start at the beginning. Yeah. So for me, I wake up and one of the things I love to do is think through my day. Okay. Um, I love, you know. Do you get, let me start even before. You do your nighttime visualization yeah. the night before. So that's what I call kind of a pre-flight plan. I already okay. kind of know what my day is going to look like. So when I wake up, I review that pre-flight plan, so to speak. Okay. Um, as a Christian, I pray over my day. Next thing I do is Now, are I, you, let me ask you, I'm gonna ask details. I don't mean to cut you off. You wake, what time are you waking up? I usually wake up about seven o'clock. Alarm, no alarm. I use an alarm. You get up, do you go to the bathroom, pee, water? Do you, do you start, do you visualize? Do you pray? Do you go exercise? What do you do first? Usually I go to the bathroom first, okay? You know, most people, they wake up in the bathroom and they, they go ahead and urinate. Go to the bathroom, then? Yeah, the next thing that I like to do, okay, is I like to review what the pre-flight plan was or what my plan is for the day. So bathroom and then bam, you're just dialing right in what you're yeah, doing for I'm the just, day. Yeah, exactly. Is that written down? Are you going it's already the journal? written down. Yeah, it's in the journal. Got it. So, okay. so I pray over my day as a Christian. Then I go ahead and... The I, prayer and your visualization, your journal, this is all together. It's all together. Okay. It's all together. I review the plan that's already set up the night before. All right. And then I go ahead and exercise. What do you do for exercise? Love it. So first of all, before I do that, I grab a granola bar, and then I usually do cardiovascular. So you exercise. like a little energy, a little like something. This to get morning, going. one of the things I did, I'm, you know, again, I'm, you know, being out of town, I took advantage of the hills, and so I ran hills this morning, did push-ups and did dips. One, it got my heart moving. Okay, yeah. it, it 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 wakes me up. All right, if you have trouble getting out of bed, go run quickly. See that energy. Is yeah. Describing. And um, so I did that. I did hills this morning. Um, very tough. It was good for my thighs, great for my heart. Um, after I did that, then I went back, took a shower. How much? So you typically do cardio in the morning? I only, today I only did five, ten minutes. Sometimes you only do five or ten minutes. Exactly. Because, okay. you know, I had places to be at, places to go, but I pushed, I pushed myself. You know, again, think of it this way. Five minutes, if you did a five minute sprint, well, first of all, no one really can sustain a five-minute sprint. That's a long sprint. Some it's people can run sprint. a mile in five but minutes. The, not me. But the, but the thing is that I'm trying to point out, it's the intensity. Yeah. So if you sprinted for five minutes, everyone would be dog tired. But you don't have to do that. You know, tone it down, but tone it just right so that your intensity is right, so that you're actually getting the most for your buck when you do the five minutes. Prescribing intensity. I'm going to try this a little bit. That's what it's about. And so... You know, basically, I just maximize my workout in a little amount of time. And then after that, I go in, eat breakfast, shower, get ready, and then I'm off with the day with what I've already pre-planned. What do you eat for breakfast? I love eating, again, I love eating nuts, berries, oatmeal. I love oatmeal. I'll go ahead and put, you know, a little bit of brown sugar on it, just a little bit. Sure. I'm, not, I'm not into a lot of different sugars and things like that. But, you know, another thing that you can do to sweeten things up, and I will do this, believe it or not, I put honey or I'll put maple syrup. These are okay. all natural products, okay? And these are the good sugars that your body knows how to burn. Right. Sprinkle a little sugar on there. Those all are the right. good sugars your body knows what to, how to deal with it. It knows how to process honey. It knows how to process maple syrup, okay? And that's not going to harm you like processed sugars will. So. so get your oats, sprinkle a little brown sugar, whatever. Exactly. What else for breakfast? Is yeah. that it? No, usually, like I said, I've got the fruit, okay? I do a fruit smoothie, okay? I'm big into juicing. What's in your smoothie? What's in the average Dr. Jason morning smoothie? Strawberries, bananas, okay? Protein, usually plant-based protein. Look at you smiling at your smoothie. I'm just telling you. I'm getting hungry. I, I love coconut milk, so you can put that in there. 
Okay. Banana, strawberry, coconut some milk. plant protein, coconut milk. And I'm good to go. That's it. That's your And fruit. if I want to sweeten it a little bit more, fruit protein I, If I want to sweeten it a little bit more, I'll put a little maple syrup in there, or I'll put some honey in. It just depends on how, which way I want to go. Okay. So. Okay, keep going with your day. So once you do that, you have breakfast, then I'm off to work, whether it is seeing patients, working with clients, or doing something creative, okay? Good. Like today in this setting, I'm here with you. <laughs> here you Ray. are on the show. And so this is work. I'm working. So, for you. <clears throat> and so with that being said, you know, after this, I'll get something sensible for lunch, like a salad or something like that, put some meat on that. I'll go to my next to-do item on my list, okay? I'm getting my snacks in between. I keep I keep a beverage with me like water. Water, exactly. Most people don't drink enough water. And and then I just work my way until it's dinner time. And you know, right now I'm out of town, so obviously I'll probably eat at a restaurant, and so I have to make a good dinner decision. All right? And usually I pick what is on the menu that's organic. Um, that's not necessarily farm raised. Like if I'm talking fish, I usually like to get wild catch. Um, I like to take advantage when I'm in coastal areas to get good, um, fresh seafood. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and then I'm doing, you know, whatever my after dinner activity is, mindful that I still want to keep a snack. And you know, the reason I talk about snacks so much between breakfast and lunch, dinner, and, uh, breakfast and dinner, dinner, bedtime is because I want to keep my blood sugar even killed. When I keep my blood sugar even, I don't have the highs and lows, and I don't feel like I'm crashing, but I feel strong and sustainable throughout the day. Um, and then, you know, getting ready for bedtime. What do you do at the end of the day? Sounds like you, after dinner, you're gonna do some more yes. entrepreneur stuff. I, yeah, I am. Work on the I business think and goals. most people get awesome things done. Awesome things done during prime time hours of TV. So I usually don't watch prime time TV. I'm usually working on what I think is prime time for my life. Yeah. And then when I get that done, the next thing that I'm doing is I go back to visualization, meditation, uh, verbalization. When I say verbalization, I mean affirmation. So okay. I say positive things about my day. I say positive things about the next day. I say positive day things about my year. Like if I have a certain goal, you know, I'll say, hey, you know, let's say a health goal, I'll say I'm getting healthier every day in every way or something like that. But yeah. words are powerful. They affirm things in your mind, just like writing does. Writing crystallizes your thoughts down. I agree. So yeah. there's something to it. I'm saying things that move me in the direction that I want and to you go. And you do this every day? Every day. It's Dude, about consistency. That's good. Yeah, that's good. So um, that that's really a typical day. My days are very exciting. And then you go nine night. What time are you going to bed? Um, it, it varies. You know, I'll sometimes sometimes I'll go to bed when I'm really tired. Probably you know usually it hits around ten thirty or eleven. If I'm working on a project and burning the midnight oil, sometimes I believe it or not, I'll go to bed at like two in the morning. That was good. That's your that's your day. I'm impressed. I'm learning some things for me. Well, you know, I, I appreciate it just talking with you even before this uh, video. I get an opportunity to learn things from you. It's been good. I want to get into this. Let me check back into this thing for just a second. Are you, are you doing okay? I'm good. All right. Um, it's about 10 till 2. Oh, wow. Let, so me, energy... set it, let me set it up for this guy, okay. too. Let me make sure this guy's on. Health tips for entrepreneurs. Here we come. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're on. <clears throat> Let me set this up. Here we are with Dr. J, Jason Littleton, the energy doctor, America's energy doctor. This is his book, Wellspring, Energized Again. A lot of the stuff we talked about today is in here and more. Really good practical tips. Right. And we've got we've got a little Instagram live going, and we have a request to for you to talk about health tips for entrepreneurs. I see you've got seven. Yeah. You've got this bonus section in the book that has all these practical tips. I right. really like that. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk entrepreneur health tips. What what do you see making a difference for them? Well, for entrepreneurs, first of all, you have to be high energy. Uh, entrepreneurs, just like myself, we're always on. Whoa. Right here. Yep. So we're always on the go. And so I tell people about making sure. Because you're an entrepreneur. You're a doctor and you're running your own business. Exactly. You know, a lot of the things that we've already talked about, you know, um, you know, in regards to making sure that you're eating, you know, good fats, good protein, uh, good carbs, um, also getting good sleep, making sure that you're exercising. A lot of the things is, are things that I offer people and tell them all the time. 
Those are good basics. I'm going to refer you to yourself, your book. Number one, self-care advice for entrepreneurs. Recognize the need for self-care. Because entrepreneurs are so, especially people that are passionate about what they do, they're putting everything into their business, content to neglect their bodies. One of the things that I usually do, um, and, I, and I do this weekly, is I go and get a massage. You know, uh, when we talk about self-care. Um, even reflexology, it makes a world of difference, okay? Um, you have to take time to do that. You have to take time to take care of your skin, to take care of uh, how you're feeling. You also have to take care of like your muscles and things like that. When you work, even though it might not be necessarily working out, just working on a job or something like that, your muscles get tired. You have aches and pains. And so, you know, making sure that you, you know, go to a gym, sit in a sauna or a hot tub, or, you know, have a good masseuse that, you know, you do get there getting massages can make a world of difference. Kind of take care of this body. I, I, I really like, number one, recognize the need for self-care. How do you take care of yourself? What do you need? I think you can answer that question yeah. for yourself. You gave a lot of examples. I like number two, make a plan and write it down. Like entrepreneurs, successful ones, have business plans. Yeah, exactly. Now, do you have a written down kind of plan for your health and, you know, and your body? And, we, and we've talked about that. You know, we talked about how, you know, when you're kind of pre out your next day, you're writing down what you're going to do in the next day, what you're going to eat, how you're going to exercise, and you really want this to line up with your goals. You have to connect the dots between uh, your goals in life and then taking care of your body, and that will motivate you to do a better job. And, and what you're talking about here, these are really good suggestions for the entrepreneurs. What you're talking about connects into this. Establish self-care routines or habits so right. that you don't have to spend as much energy and thought on it because you're going to want to put that into your business. Another one that I really, really like that you have in here, prepare healthy meals and snacks ahead of time. Exactly, exactly. When you do that, then you know you don't have to think through at the point of care in terms of eating. Um, it's on autopilot and then you just have to do it and it makes it easy and you'll be able to get uh, the nutrition that you need and have that perfect day which we referred to. Let me ask you for example, you you put in here find convenient ways to get more physical activity, Ex, you know, exercise yeah. that works for busy people. And what do you so see works for people? A lot of like morning or lunch or how do they do it? Well, it just depends. Like again, I tell people usually morning, but when I talk about you know being innovative in this, a lot of entrepreneurs will actually do like intramural soccer, intramural football, things like that to get them out and healthy and to keep them motivated. When you do or participate in a sport, a lot of times you actually do some training outside of that sport so you can perform well. That's great, but also just playing in the sport or doing that activity itself burns calories, keeps you active. It's a source of movement and it makes a difference. And it's social too. And it's you fun. Get that and it's social. Yeah. And it's competitive. Yeah. And it's fun, like you said. You get your, you just get those competitive juices moving. There, there's our shout out for the request for the entrepreneur. Let's see what they, we'll just put pause on this for a second. See, Jake, did you like that? Was that good? Vegetables are important. Thanks for watching. All right. Um, there's a couple more of these that I wanted to get because I like in here. I wanted to hear you talk about this, having written a book on energy right. and, you know, kind of almost having a specialty in this a little bit. This is from Dr. Jason's book, again, Wellspring, check it out. This, this whole, most, a lot of what we're talking about is coming out of this thing, but 10 common reasons for low energy. Why are you tired and fatigued? Yeah, yeah. What are some of the most common things that- Well, you know, just from the top of my head again, you know, you know, just correlating with what I wrote and then what I, you know, what I know is that when you talk about uh, reasons for low energy, first of all, it could be a metabolic issue. We never want to overlook that. Sometimes we say maybe you're not eating this or that, but sometimes it could be a metabolic, it could be a biochemical issue. Well, when you say metabolic, what do you mean? Like well, somebody's so, weight or the food they're eating? Yeah, or? No, no, first of all, it could be it could be a thyroid issue. Sometimes you could be hypothyroid. And you know, we're gonna check thyroid labs like a TSH, T3, T4, and see if that's the issue because supplementing that appropriately can make all the difference in your metabolism, your energy, weight loss even. So we have to consider those things. It can be a concern with, you know, maybe you're anemic and you don't know it. Okay? So there are some medical causes some for medical fatigue causes. And, and as a physician, and tiredness. And you, I look those at are all easy of to that. check. They're easy to check. It's a simple blood test. We'll check a CBC or a thyroid. Another issue is being deficient in vitamin D. 
oftentimes people can have low vitamin D levels because they're not getting enough sun, or, or you know, they're just, you know, basically, you know, they're not taking in the right amount of dietary vitamin D. And when you do that, um, you can feel tired and low energized. And when you supplement it, sometimes you can feel like you're bouncing off the walls because you've got that replenished. So that's another thing. I like these that you say you're, so 10 common causes, obesity, being overweight, Eating too much simple carbs or sugar, yeah. relying on energy boosters, caffeine and energy drinks. We talked about yeah. that, which also have a lot of sugar. How about this one? Not sleeping enough. I had a I had a patient gun me once. That was more than once. They're like, I just what energy drink should I take? I just don't know which one. I, could, well, I said, Well, how, tell me about how much you sleep. And she's like, Maybe three hours. I was like, You're never gonna feel well rested and have energy on three hours of sleep. No, ever. You're never. I mean, I usually tell people you want to get in between seven to nine hours of sleep. Okay. Um, it's so important because your mind gets restored. Seven to nine. I think a lot of people would consider that a luxury and think, oh, five or it six is. is what you need. Well, and so I find that most entrepreneurs get between, believe it or not, five to six. And you can operate on that, but if you're going to operate on that, you have to make sure that, again, your eating's right, your fluid, your hydration's right, you're exercising, you're taking care of your mental health, you're taking, you're living a, a stress-free life as much as possible, because it's hard to um, only get five or six hours of sleep and not do those things. But to my point, you have to also do those things if you're giving, if you're getting seven to nine hours. Of sleep. So sleep is one of these things where. I, would, I tell people, try it for a week, really try to get seven, eight, or nine. Right. Figure out what your you know optimal level right. of sleep is. Try it and see how you feel. And so much of the time, a little thing like that can make you feel so much better and right. happier. Right. There's a couple other things in here we talk about, not enough physical activity, stressed out, and not right. coping. But then let's go into this for just a second. You're depressed or suffering from a mood disorder. How do you know when you're de like if you're low energy fatigue and you're wondering, am I depressed? What would, what would you tell somebody how well, they can? Are you moving towards your goals? Are you thinking about you know? Um, are you thinking about accomplishing you know your life plan? Are you thinking about? Are you have you lost interest in things that you used to like? Do you feel? Um, I mean, do you feel sad? You know, these are just common things. When we look at evaluating depression, you know, we're looking at sleep patterns have changed. We're seeing that people uh, have found uninterest in things that they normally had interest for. We're looking to see if people are eating correctly. We're looking to see if anxiety is a component of it. So we're looking at some basic things that, from a clinical perspective to see if you're depressed. And I think a big part of it is what are you doing? Are you having? Are you are you accomplishing things in your to-do list, or are you kind of just kind of flying, flying by night, kind of just taking things um, at what come? People who are motivated and who are not depressed they have a plan. They're working it. They're upbeat. They have a certain rhythm to your life, and when that rhythm changes, that's a key that you might be dealing with depression. Yeah, it might be something different than just low energy. Yeah, exactly. Let me let me shift gears a little sure. bit. We talked a little bit about this before. Again, this is Dr. Jason Littleton, MD, here, and I want to ask a man question for him. In terms of low energy and fatigue, let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's talk about the big T, testosterone. Testosterone replacement, efficiency. Talk to me a little bit about that. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of gentlemen, you know, in their 40s, 50s, um, can feel low energy and everything else can be in line. They're eating right, they're exercising, uh, the lab tests are good, but maybe the lab test of testosterone is out of range. It's low, and maybe they need to replace that. And so what we do is a simple blood test. We'll find out what level there it's at, and if it is at a suboptimal level, we can we can we have a variety of ways that we can replace that. Some are injections, some are topical that you know that absorb through the skin. Um, some are even in pill form. But that's to be really important as far as how people feel physically, as far as um, their sexual health as well. Um, you know, testosterone replacement is that. These are things that more doctors have to ask their patients about and take seriously. Patients want to know about this, and patients have questions. You start thinking of this men in their 40s, kind of 50s and 40s, beyond. 40s, even, even 35, maybe. It really depends. You know, when you take a good history, all things can come together. You kind of, you know, you, it kind of can lead you there based on what someone's telling you yeah. and based on what their medical history is. So yeah. sometimes you find it by diagnosis of exclusion, but sometimes 
that the end of right there, basically what the person's telling you. So it sounds like you feel like this would be more kind of underdiagnosed and treated. Than I think it's underdiagnosed over. because I, I think that um, we don't. Um, I think physicians don't screen for it enough. I don't think that they ask the right questions enough about it. Um, and I think that sometimes we chalk things up to people being unmotivated or low energy just because of what they're eating or some other metabolic uh, issue. And, and you're saying it might be low testosterone and something that can be fixed with yeah, replacement. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But people have to ask the right questions. And I think when you're dealing with energy, that's something that people have. You have to think about hormonal health as well. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thanks for being here, man. This That's is a heck of an interview. No, I appreciate that. Oh, this is, we just unload, just dumped a whole bunch oh of my great it's stuff a, for this. It's an honor to be on set with you, and uh, I'm grateful. Show. Hey, I'm grateful. Had a fantastic time. This, this is good. Amazing. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, I don't have anything else. Is there anything else you would like to say in no, closing? No, no, I think we're good. I think, good you know, I just, you know, again, Energy uh, is something that's really important to me because I feel like people have things to do. I feel like people have things to accomplish. I feel like I've never met a person that didn't have a, a, a purpose. I've only met people who haven't found their purpose and passion. And so, you know, I'm all about helping people uh, find that or reawakening that and then helping them to connect that with their health because the longer you live, the more energized that you are, the more you can do and the more people you can touch. That's your mission. Yeah, that's my that's mission. your purpose. You can learn more about that. I'm, my website, jasonindy.com, um, and there you can, uh, you can pick up your copy of the book, you can download the food map, and that will tell you all the things that I encourage you to eat and things that uh, I think are really good for your body. Um, follow my blogs, follow me on social media, Dr. Jason. Check this guy out yeah, on Instagram, on Instagram Facebook. Instagram, Definitely check Facebook, out the book, we got it right Twitter. here. Um, so just stay in touch. I love the open communication. I love the back and forth. And you're going to have ideas that maybe I haven't thought of that we can talk about, research, and, uh, and go from there. So I just look forward to having a continual dialogue with you guys. Now let me ask you one more thing in closing. Give me, give me a kind of a compare and contrast of what a typical low energy person is doing and how they can change and feel a lot better. A typical low energy Person doesn't have appropriate habits. They do not have a plan. They don't have systems. People who are energized have a system that they do day in and day out, no matter how they feel, no matter what the weather is, and they work that system. That is the bread and butter of it. Sometimes people are looking for, uh, you know, just something magical or just. You know, something quick that fix, is a, yeah, drink, quick fix. A quick fix. But I found, and I thought about this time and time again, it comes to having good routines, good habits, habits, man. Putting the good stuff on autopilot. Yeah. That's what you have to do. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. Love it. Thanks, my man. Oh, high five. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Woo! Done. I'll turn this off.